to Build, where we are coming to you live from London. Today, we are joined by a very special guest. Please give it up for Pearl Mackey. Hello. <laughs> so, before we get started, if anyone has got a question for Pearl, then please tweet it to us on at Build Series LDN or leave a comment on Facebook, and we are going to ask as many as we can in the next 20 minutes. Pearl, how are you doing today? I'm all right. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. We bit cold. A bit cold. We'll it's get there. Chilly, isn't it? We'll whack the heating Warming up for here. you. But I just meant just outside. <laughs> it's sort of it that is. deceptive kind of sunny. You go outside and you're like, yeah, it's going to be great. It's not. It's freezing. <gasps> I love this. We get a weather warning at the start of the build. <laughs> <laughs> FYI. <laughs> when you go outside. Well, we have got a lot to talk about that isn't the weather. So we're going to start in a weird way with what you're doing at the moment. And we're going to work back. Yeah. So you are in a play called The Birthday Party. I am in a play called The Birthday Party. What can you tell us about it for anybody who's not encountered it before? Um, well, it's by Harold Pinter. Um, who is a, a fantastic playwright. It's his first mm. full-length play um, that was actually written 60 years ago, the, the press night of it um, that we, we opened on, on the 18th of, of January, and that was um, the date, 60 years, 60 year anniversary of when it opened um, initially in 1958. So um, it ran for four performances then, and then was taken off because um, everyone hated it. <laughs> um, hopefully, well, we've already run for longer. Yeah. So essentially, that's good. You've um, already won. We've, like... we've already won. I mean, it's, it has been done a few times since then um, to much more sort of critical acclaim. It's, um, but I think, you know, um, well, the play itself is very, uh, it's very ambiguous. Um, it's sort of, mm -hmm. it's, it's set in a b, &B in, in, uh, on the South Coast. Um, it's these, this couple run this sort of dilapidated b and and they have this long-term lodger, Stanley, uh, played by Toby Jones. Um, and then these two guys come along uh, who sort of know him from somewhere, maybe... And um, then eventually just take him away. And that's, that's pretty much the story. It's kind of all that happens, really. But, I mean, they also throw him a birthday party, which is why it's called the birthday mm -hmm. party. Um, but it's very open-ended and it's very mysterious. And um, I think Pinter sort of did that deliberately because at the time, he himself used to be an actor. Um, he went by the name of David Barron. Which is quite interesting. Mm. Good fact. Um, <laughs> That's pub quiz knowledge. That um, is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. <laughs> um, and he, I, I think he played the detective in a lot of uh, sort of Agatha Christie kind of whodunits okay. and that kind of thing. Plays that were very much wrapped up and sort of conclusive by the end. Mm. And I think he kind of wanted to write something that was a bit of an antithesis to that and sort of a bit of. Yeah, just, just kind of different and just allowed you to kind of make your own decisions as to what happens and to, mm. you know, who all the characters kind of are and where they're from. And we've had some great reactions from people so far. It's like, you mm. know, they kind of come up afterwards and kind of want to pick your brain about it. And they're like, mm. oh, I thought, you know, I thought those guys were angels. I thought they were the mafia. I thought, you know, so it, it's, it's really interesting. It's, it's really interesting to sort of be in it. And um, sometimes a bit hard to understand, but mm. I think that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you feel? You mentioned there it was, it's the anniversary. When you kind of yeah. stepped foot on stage with that added significance, did it feel a bit more special, a bit different? Um, yeah, I guess it did. Um, I mean, it was, it was, it's just, it's just amazing to, to be on the stage, really, to be back um, in such a wonderful theatre as well. Is it the Harold Pinter mm. Theatre, which was his favourite theatre, so they named it, they named it after him, sort nice. of posthumously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, and it's a lovely theatre as well. It's, um, it's quite intimate, but it's still... You know, very grand and very beautiful, and the stage is is lovely. It's not you don't have to sort of project a huge amount, and, and mm. I mean a little bit, obviously. But <laughs> <laughs> you're not you don't feel like you're shouting. No, exactly. You kind of feel like people can sort of hear you even in your kind of intimate delivery, which is which is great, really. So it's just it's lovely lovely stage to be on. Mm. And had you read or performed or encountered the play in any way before you took this job? I had heard of it. Um, and I'd read a couple of other Pinter plays, um, but I had never read it before um, at all, actually. Um, I didn't really know the story either, and I was a bit like... And read it, and I was like, whoa, what is... What actually is going on? Mm. And, um, and the, the character I play uh, is a... She's a friend of, of the, the, the guy who's a lodger at the B&B &B and, and sort of the owners of it, a kind of local uh, girl. And I first sort of read it, and I was a bit like, I don't... There's not, there's, there's not much to grasp, you know, there's not sort of much mm. kind of backstory for her. Um, and I, I went into the audition and I sort of, it kind of, it really made my brain kind of spin. I was like, I, mm. I read it and then a couple of days later I was like, I'm still really, really thinking about this. So this, you know, that's obviously going to be, that's obviously a good sign. Yeah. You know, that's obviously an interesting text if you're still kind of, you're still with it and it still sort of stays with you. Mm. Um, 
So, yeah, and I was kind of like, you know, I don't know, I, is she just sort of there to kind of prove how bad the male characters can be? And I, I talked to the director about it, and I was like, I don't, I really don't want her to just be that. I don't want her to be a foil, you know, I don't... She's much more than that. And he was like, I know, I, to I agree. I, I feel like she's much more than that as well. Mm. And actually, um, though, you know, I mean, she does go through some, some pretty awful things happen to her, um, mostly off stage, but um, she sort of ends up on a table, sort of, no spoilers. Not going to give it away. It's just not fun stuff. Yeah, not it's very fun stuff happens to her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and especially in the sort of the whole era of, like, Me Too and mm. um, the Time's Up movement, it's kind of, I was like, this is kind of... It's really important to, for her to kind of come out of it strong. And actually, looking at the text, she's the only person that gets to leave of her own free will. And sort of her last line is, like, she's like, no, I'm, I'm going, but I, I see you for all of... You know, I see you for what you are. I see the, the two strangers mm. that come in. She's like, I see you. And I know what's happening, but I'm out, which is actually quite strong. So it kind of, you know, all the clues are in there, which is which is mm. really nice. But um, but yeah, it's sort of nice to give her that kind of interpretation, sort of modern mm. kind of feminist interpretation of it. After that initial sort of not panic, but kind of confusion, maybe at what she was supposed to be. Was yeah. it quite nice to actually be able to say, well, you know what? this is what she is, and talk to the director and make that decision for yourself. Yeah, totally. I mean, he was really, really, um, really keen for us to s sort of develop her together and to kind mm -hmm. of develop her along those lines as well. Um, Ian Rickson is a fantastic director. He's, um, mm. It's been such a wonderful process. I mean, the company as well, everyone, is, is mm. just fantastic. Um, but Ian, is, he's got a very special way of working. He's got a... He kind of really recognises that all actors, as indeed all people, are different and need different things in order to be able to kind of work in their best way, you know. Mm. Um, and he's very, he's, he's great at sort of being able to give you the different things that you need and kind of bring out of you what, you know, what, what the best of what you can be doing, which, mm -hmm. is, which is fantastic. And he makes it fun and it's sort of, it's very collaborative, which a lot of directors don't work like that. But it's a, mm. you know, it's a wonderful, it's, it's a great space to be in. You know, for me, I was quite like, this is, you know, quite an intimidating job to go into because, well, obviously, it, well, it's, it's Pinter, which is, you know, massive and very revered. Yeah. <laughs> and also, you know, working with Toby Jones and Zoe Wanamaker and Stephen Mangan and mm. Peter White, Tom Vaughan, all that. You know, all people who have done amazing work and, you know, have been in the industry for a lot longer than I have. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, who I've sort of admired, grown up admiring mm. and, and watching and... And actually, he's, it's just it's just been absolutely wonderful. Everyone's so great, and we all get on really well. And mm. it's, it, as I said, you know, it's, it's quite a weird play. So you can kind of, we sort of, uh, you know, I think the sort of third night in, we all kind of sort of dispersed and went home. And then the next day, we came back in, and we were like, that's not very nice. So we decided to, like, <laughs> we, we all kind of gather um, after the play, like, sort of in a little circle, have a little huddle, and just be like, how was that? Was, how was that for you? Was that okay? Was that, you know, how is everyone? Everyone all right? Okay, cool. That kind of thing, just to sort of make sure that we're all all right, which is really sweet. That's really lovely. Nice. I think as well, the cast, looking at the list of who it is, it sounds like a really great dinner party. It does, actually. Because they are all, everybody is so funny and just amazing. You need to get that dinner together, I think. Well, we're, we're having a cast dinner quite soon. Yes. I know, <laughs> I'm really excited about it. It's really good. Yeah, Zoe organised it. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is a great idea. That's amazing. Yeah, it's really, I mean, everyone, they're really fun and... Um, there's a great dynamic, I think, you know, so it's, it's very funny. Mm. It's lovely. And the director, Ian, you mentioned there, mm. have you worked with him before? Is this your Never. first time? No, um, he is, he's amazing. He directed Jerusalem, um, sort of his, and many, many, many other things, but that was sort of, mm. that's kind of the biggest, I guess. Um, but yeah, he's brilliant, man. I, I really, really like him. He's, um, he's just, just great, just makes you feel completely validated and comfortable and nothing's ever wrong you know he could, he'll ask you a question and you'll be like oh I don't someone sort of quite early on he asked them a question and they, he was like I don't know the answer to that yet and he was like okay that's cool whereas you know it doesn't make you feel stupid that you haven't yeah. got the answer or that you should have done more research or that kind of thing he just kind of you know just makes you feel like oh okay great well that's fine you know we can come to that and we can just kind of nudges you in the right direction sort of allows you to find find it yourself really mm. and for a lot of people they'll know you primarily from doctor who and that'll be yes. where they were introduced to you and it might seem for a lot of onlookers that you're doing theater you're doing something different but this is actually a bit more of a homecoming isn't it this is what you were doing before homecoming good pinter reference there 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> um, yeah, it was what I was doing before. Um, which is, it's really nice to come back to it in a, you know, I mean, doing Doctor Who was such an incredible adventure. Mm. I had an amazing time doing it. It was wonderful. And I think one of the great things about it is that I think it, it kind of never leaves you. You know, mm. it, it, you'll always, I will always be that character. I will, mm. always, no one, you know, where, where the sort of the Doctor regenerates and, you know, you still get to sort of, you get to put your own individual stamp on it. And mm. it's still part of you, which is lovely and, you know... I think I think it's great, but it is yeah. It's really nice to come back and do do theatre. It's it's very different, um, and also I think you know Doctor Who was able to, you know, give me a sort of this platform to kind of do a play at this level, you know, which mm. is a lot bigger than I did before. So <laughs> <laughs> lots more pressure, but also um, yeah, lots more fun. Mm. Do you have any rituals that you do like pre-show? Have you got any like mini superstitions? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's a good question. Um, I haven't for this show actually, but I was um, I was in the curious incident of the dog in the yeah. nighttime um, just before I did Doctor Who, and um, for that show it was quite a physical show. So I basically I had to do like five tuck jumps just before I went on. Like every every show, <laughs> literally every show, like all my, <laughs> the rest of the company were like, "How long is this going to last?" You know, like sort of three weeks in, they were like, "You're still doing it." I did it for a year. Like, every show, I was like, I just have to. It was good, though, because it sort of gets the energy going, and then you sort of go on stage, and it was, it was quite a physical show, and there's a lot... It was quite demanding. Where were you doing so. these? Just in the just wings? Just in the wings, or? yeah. Literally, just literally five tuck jumps as the music was starting, and then just walked straight on stage. <laughs> Your core muscles after a year of that must have been amazing. I know. I think I should start doing them again, actually. <laughs> Bring it back. Just before summer. <laughs> I was not expecting that answer. No, no. I thought you it's might a be like, question, you know, have a quiet moment on my own, you know, oh, yeah, reflect. Yeah, then have tuck a cup jumps. of coffee. No, just five tuck jumps. <laughs> don't do it in this because I wear heels and that could be really dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> and between theatre and TV, there are kind of like pros and cons professionally for both. Obviously, television, uh, when you're not live, you have multiple takes, you can fluff your lines. Theatre... Yes. You have that audience there, obviously, but you also get the immediate reaction from them. Yeah. How have you found the transition, like, from one to the other? Because you've done the transition now. You went theatre, TV, TV, yeah. theatre. What's that all been like? It's it's interesting, actually. It is um it is quite it's quite different. Um, mm. and it is quite different. I mean, I remember sort of um going into TV for the first time, sort of being like, this is oh, I have to do that again. That was. I, that was that was it. I've I've done it. <laughs> that, was, that was my set and scene. I'm good. Um, and then yeah, the sort of keeping the energy up and sort of keeping it kind of going for you know it might be like forty setups or you know sort of you know especially with like emotional scenes and stuff like that. Mm. It can be quite hard to kind of keep that. And then obviously you know with theatre you get the the journey and you get to kind of build up to that moment. But then you get to build up to that moment, and then if you don't hear it right, you can't be like, oh, can I just do that again? <laughs> <laughs> just, just do another take. I'll cry. I'll cry more this time. <laughs> you know, you sort of, that's it. You kind of have your, you have your moment. But, but yeah, you do get the audience there, um, which can be good and, you know, can be good and can be bad because mm. you're like, oh, this is the joke. Oh, this is the, oh, you didn't laugh. Cool. And then you're like, why didn't they laugh? And then you're like, no, I have to do the rest of my, do the rest of the scene. Keep going. Um, and that kind of thing. But then, you know, with, with TV, you get, you don't know if they're going to laugh until it's on TV, and by then you have you don't have any control over it anyway. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think they're both. I think they're both um, you know wonderful mediums. I wouldn't like to just do one or the other for for the rest of my career. It would yeah. be nice to sort of be able to mix between the two. I think they're I think they're both you know really valuable learning experiences, and yeah, they're both great. Yeah, don't worry. Don't don't feel like you have to talk one of them down. Good, good. Thank you. So we're going to have a little about ch chat about the television side, Doctor Who, because yeah. obviously you bowed out at Christmas. So we've I actually did. had a question come through on Twitter from oh, yes. Raymond to kick us off. Hello, Raymond. So he says, what was it like to play Bill in Capaldi's final adventure in that last episode? How was all of that? It was great. I mean, I had a great time. Um, you know, I mean, it was, yeah, it was a really lovely sort of, it was a lovely end. I mean, I, I thought the episode was fantastic. I really enjoyed mm. it. You know, it's sort of, it's, it's everything you kind of want from a Christmas special, really. You know, it was funny. It was heartwarming. It was Christmassy. You know, it was really emotional as well. I mean, this <sighs> stuff with the, 
I mean, everyone's seen it by you, now, haven't they? Yeah, I can't, I can't ruin it. We can it. safely assume, we can safely, I think. We can safely <laughs> talk about the plot. It's the first time that's ever happened to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the bit with the soldiers and the Christmas and mm. the, uh, the armistice. Armistice? Is that the right, yeah, that's the right word? Yeah, Thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> Someone's nodding. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that was, that was really emotional stuff, wasn't it? Mm. You know, and then saying goodbye to the first Doctor and, and also, you know, the, the regeneration and... Oh God! I mean, it was it was oh it was great, but it was it was a really it was really emotional to film. To be honest, it was mm. very um, yeah. You know, it was kind of like a it was like a real goodbye. You know, that mm. bit where Matt and Peter and I are hugging at the that was our last scene together. Mm. You know, so it was it was genuinely quite emotional, um, which was which was good. Yeah, I mean, it, oh, it was lovely. I had a wonderful time. I think it was great. Mm. I think it was a, it was a really nice sort of finale. Mm. So we're going to have a look at a clip from it in oh, a minute. Yeah. But first of all, did you watch it on Christmas Day? Oh, with yeah. Everyone? Did you gather the family round? Definitely, yeah. And I got them to shut up as well, which is no mean feat. Oh. <laughs> I need your tips on that later. <laughs> you, can, you can imagine how much my... Fa you can see how much I talk. You can imagine how much the rest of my family... I'm actually quite quiet in comparison. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, let's have a little look at you in action. Quite beautiful, really, isn't she? Yeah. If you like, ladies made of glass. Well, aren't all ladies made of glass in a, a way? <laughs> <laughs> very good, sir, very good. <laughs> Are we now? Oh, my dear, I, I hope it doesn't offend you to know that I have had some experience of the uh, fairer sex. Me too. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> That's so funny, that, isn't it? I now, there that. were loads of these bits, though, where Bill had these brilliant lines, kind of... Every time they made a comment about women that was just so outdated, Bill <laughs> yeah. would just fight back. She's just like, nah, I'm not having that. She was not having it at all. And did you think it felt more significant? Because, obviously, yourself as actors and us as viewers, we knew what was coming. We knew that by the end of the episode, the Doctor was going to be female. Yeah. I think, in a way, it was... Yeah, I think part of it was that. And it was also, you know, kind of a... I think a way of uh, Stephen getting the first Doctor in and kind of looking at the it's sort of looking at the commentary of the time rather mm. than you know it's not it's not um, the way the first Doctor was played it's it's the sort of the way it was written at the time it's you know there are there are some views in it like that and you know sort of it, around that time it was it was a lot more sexist overtly. Mm. Um, and and yeah and I think it did make it much more significant the fact that it's like no this is this is coming, and you know, I mean, it's kind mm. of been building up to it since, you know, the beginning of the finale app, like in, in episode 11, it's sort of mm -hmm. with, um, you know, with the, with the master and Missy kind of, you know, they're kind of, they're sparring and they're kind of, oh, you know, I'm going to be a woman soon, that kind of thing, and is the future going to be all girl? I hope so. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I think it's, but yeah, I think it did make it much more significant, which mm. was, it was really fun for me. I was like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come it on, almost then. felt like, as a viewer, that Bill was in on the secret with us. Like, I felt like, oh, oh really? she, oh, she almost great. knows. Like, it just felt so important. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Oh, I've never heard that before. Oh. That's wicked. <laughs> and obviously, it was TV history. It was a huge yes. moment. How does it feel to have been part of something like that? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's incredible, isn't it? It's, um, it's not something you sort of set out to do when you decide to become an actress when you're five singing in front of the mirror <laughs> you know like ah oh, yes historical moment on tv please tick um but yeah then it sort of happens and you're like whoa this is incredible you know and mm. i think it is it's monumental that the doctor's female now i think yeah. it's i think it's fantastic i think she's gonna be great I can't wait. I can't wait i'm so excited <laughs> i'm also I'm quite excited to watch an episode of doctor who that i don't know what happens are you not going to tap cool. them up for any spoilers? No, man. On I don't want to know. You're gonna... I really want to just watch it and just be like, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Show me. <laughs> and the reception Bill had as well in the show was absolutely phenomenal. And she also was a, like made history for a number of reasons. Yeah. One of which being her bisexuality. Yeah. And what you've well, spoken no, she about... Was gay. Or straight up. Straight up gay? Yeah. Straight up. Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that was brilliant about that, though, is that it didn't define her. It wasn't her only kind of characteristic. Yeah. It wasn't the only thing driving her story forward. Do you think that's important, that when we add characters to represent, it does that? Oh, God, yeah. Um, hugely. I think, um, I think that was, you know, something 
when uh, when Stephen and Brian were like, oh, Bill's going to be a lesbian, I was like, that's fantastic, but I don't want that to be her defining characteristic mm. because you don't do that with a straight character, so why would you do that with a gay character? It's not... Mm. You, you don't need to do that. There are, And there are, you know, there were many many other elements of her character that were sort of foregrounded and it is I mean it's incredibly important to have this representation but it is important to not for that not to be the only thing that yeah. we show because mm. that's in a sense it's kind of doing it a disservice it's not it's not giving the right representation do you know what I mean it's yeah. sort of sort of saying well this is that's that's it mm. and rather than being like well obviously everyone's a person and their sexuality is just Mm. you know that's just another part of them mm. you know it kind of plays into doesn't it when like when it was announced that bill was gay or we found out a lot of people said oh this shouldn't be a big deal and it kind of helps move towards that point where you know what it shouldn't be a big deal but mm. right now this actually is quite important but yeah right now you know and i've i'm doing like various um comic cons and stuff like that since uh since the airing of, of the show of the show of the series you know i've had people come up to me and be like you know, I had one girl come up to me in, in, in Berlin and she was like, I literally watching you on it was Doctor Who's my favourite show, watching you play a gay character who was completely comfortable with her sexuality. It wasn't like she was grappling with it. It wasn't like she needed to come out or anything. And, you know, mm -hmm. she had this big secret. She was just like, no, I'm, I like girls. That's it. She, she was like, that helped me to come out to my family. Like, without that, I wouldn't have been able to do it. And I was like... That's pretty amazing, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's you know, I didn't I didn't really think of the the significance of it until until that. Do you know what I mean? Something mm. like that kind of really grounds it for you. That it's must like, just that's... floor you to hear that reaction. Yeah, I mean it still makes me quite emotional thinking about it now. Do you know what I mean? And at the time I was just like, Whoa, this is too much. I was just <laughs> like in floods of tears. I was just like hugging this girl. Give her a hug. And I know I did. I was like, we were both like weeping. Um, but it's like, you know, I think that's that's incredible. And I think, you know, I think the way I thought about it was, you know, I'm very lucky to be from a very open-minded liberal family in a, you know, I was mm. born in Brixton. It's very diverse. There's people from all walks of life, all races, all cultures, all religions, all sexualities. Um, and, you know, my family existence has been like that since I was a kid and I'm very grateful for it. Um, but for, so for me, it wasn't a bit very big deal, but I was like, you know, this, this program's aired all over the world in places yeah. where being gay is not, so accepted or you know where in fact you know people have very different experiences in their own sort of family lives so it is the representation is crucial on a mainstream show on a mainstream sci-fi show as well it's like mm. it's so important mm. so yeah I'm, i feel, feel very privileged <laughs> to, to have been part of that <laughs> And we've had another question in on social. So Tobias on Facebook is asking, you've, so you've said you're looking forward to watching Doctor Who without being in it. Yes. But if the call came in, Tobias is asking this, and they asked you to be in an episode with the 13th Doctor, would you say yes? Well, I don't know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, she's great. I don't know. I mean, hasn't come in yet, but uh, we shall see. We shall see. <laughs> And back when you started, which must feel like a really long time ago now, it's only, it it's just time is weird anyway, and then Doctor Who adds another layer, but it must <laughs> feel like a long time ago. Yeah. I remember seeing that you, uh, Jenna Coleman sent you some flowers and yeah. like a little cheeky bit of advice. Did you have anything to pass on? Because the new Doctor's going to well, have multiple assistants. I didn't even know that they were going to, they started. I didn't even know they'd started. And then it was announced and they were like, oh, they've been filming for like three months. I was like, oh. I was like, I missed that sort of opportunity because that was so nice for me to get flowers from, mm. from Jenna and a bit of advice. Um, but, I mean, I'm sure they don't need any advice from me. I just say, enjoy it as much as you just can. Smash it's such, it. It's such an adventure. <laughs> I think just, just have as much fun with it as you possibly can. And um, learning lines, um, <laughs> uh, which is it's just, it's important. Um, mm. Yeah, just have loads of fun and and just enjoy enjoy each other and play around with it and it's just it's such a fun show and it's such a big adventure and it will you know it will be part of your life for probably for the rest of your career so you know just just enjoy it it's great <laughs> <laughs> and for yourself as well on a personal level you know it's no secret that of course if you look back in history women of color and women in general there's not always amazing roles and you've said about not having anybody to kind of who looked like you on television mm. how does it now feel that for so many young girls you might be that person and that's um that's another sort of bowl me over kind of moment really um 
yeah, I think that again, that representation is is long overdue, and mm -hmm. I think it's I think that's amazing that for you know little little girls, little children of color, that they can mm. be like, oh, hey, okay, maybe I can do that, or maybe I can travel through space and time. <laughs> you know, it's like, broaden, you know, broaden your horizon, you can do anything. And I think, you know, seeing someone that looks like you doing that, or, you know, having adventures, or that kind of thing, I think is, it's amazing, you know, and it just sort of, it means that the, it's, it's never not possible. You know, mm. it just kind of, it doesn't, it's not an active saying, yes, this, this door is open to you, but it's, it's just not, it's not deliberately saying this is closed and without mm. you kind of even realising. I think, I think when I was a kid, I remember seeing Lieutenant Uhura on Star Trek. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that was an American show and it was very different and it was you know, not, not on for that long and um, all, uh, the timings all, you know, but there, were, there weren't many people that were like me and I, I remember being like, that is, it's something that I didn't really think about at the time, but then sort of getting getting older and sort yeah. of be, wanting to be an actress, I remember being like, oh, that isn't, that is, it's quite limited for me. It will be, you know, it kind of, it, it makes it smaller. It makes the possibilities kind of not as possible, mm. essentially. So, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully some, uh, we can build some uh, time traveling, uh, time traveling lesbians. Let's do it. <laughs> 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 what a bold statement to start the morning with. <laughs> Let's make it happen. <laughs> so one <laughs> other thing you've always done is, which you've demonstrated in the last half an hour, is you've always spoken out on issues that are important to you and you've used your platform on one of the world's biggest shows to do that. Was Where a lot of people, to be honest, might shy away from it. It's a lot easier sometimes to not say anything. Was that a conscious decision that you made yourself in thinking, you know what, I'm going to use this time and this space that I've got to speak out on things that are important? I don't know if it was a, a conscious decision in terms of... Well, yeah, I mean, I guess it was. It was sort of... I think with all the with everything that was happening in the world at the time, it was very... It's, I mean, as still is, it's very hard to not have an opinion on it, and I, especially the way mm. that I was brought up and the way that my... You know, the way that my mind works. I, this is it's the same stuff that I would have been saying without the platform, but... You know, I think it is more, much more important when you do have a platform to use it, mm. you know, to sort of, even if it sort of brings, you know, it gets one person to vote or, you know, brings, it enlightens one person about this issue that is, is important. I think that's, that's fantastic. Do you know what I mean? If you, if you have that kind of capability, you know, with, it's within mm. your grasp and it's, it's, it's easy. I mean, for me, you know, it's not, it's, it's just, it's sending, it's, it's one tweet, but actually it reaches a lot more people than it would have done before I was in Doctor Who. So, mm -hmm. so essentially, yeah, I mean, if it can change one person's mind or just even just open some one person's eyes, then that's, that's fantastic. I think, you know, I think, yeah, I think it's great. And, you know, I think a lot, there's a lot of people that I follow on social media that use, use their platforms for, for great things as well. And sort of, you know, bring things to, bring things to light that I didn't necessarily know about. Mm. So, you know, it's it, them sort of passing it on to me and then I'm passing it on as well. I think, you know, that's, it's, that's what social media is about, isn't it? It's like, mm. spread the word, so. Because mm. your Twitter header at the moment as well is for a really brilliant campaign. It's the 50-50 and it yeah. says, we stand with Time's Up. So really quickly before we finish, mm. can you, just for anybody who isn't quite sure about what that is, can you just speak about it a bit and why you're supporting it? Yeah, um, well, essentially it's a... a an organisation called um, ERA, which is Equal Representation for Actresses, um, which is essentially um, it's essentially just looking for equal representation within crowd scenes, within uh, you know, uh, in stage management, in crews, in casts, um, just sort of asking theatres and, and uh, broadcasting companies to to kind of pledge to do that. Um, you know, obviously not like every single play has to have half men, half women, that kind of thing, because that's not that's not possible. But, you know, just to sort of do some things where there are female leads or there are more female mm. characters or, you know, that kind of thing. Just so it's just to, just to get the balance right, really. And, you know, a lot of theatres are starting to do it. So, you know, or pledging to do it by 2020, which is, you know, has to, has, has to be a gradual thing, I guess. Mm. Don't know why, but... Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's, it's a great thing. And, you know, obviously, obviously the Time's Up movement is a fantastic movement mm. i think it's it's so incredible and so important again you know those women using their platform to speak about issues that are so important and using their visibility and and saying you know it's not just in hollywood that this has is happening but 
it is happening in Hollywood and thus we can use our, yeah. uh, you know, our, our visibility to sort of say, you know, this shouldn't be happening anywhere, you know, to a young girl who's going into farm work or is working in a supermarket or, mm. you know, any kind of, it's, it's just, it's not okay and it's, it's, uh, it's done, it's got to be done now, we've got to finish it, so... 100%. Yeah. <laughs> well, that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> so my final question before we have to let you go, I could speak all day, but sadly we can't, is what else could we be seeing you doing this year? Have you got any plans? I haven't got any plans as yet um, okay. that, I can, that I can talk about. Anyway, um, but I've been, yeah, been reading some pretty exciting stuff. So... Okay. Hopefully, we'll be doing some of it soon. We can watch this space. Just to be very, very vague. <laughs> that was incredibly vague, wasn't it? Sorry. I should be better at being vague by now. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, watch this space. All right. Well, that is a promising note to end on. So if you want to see Pearl in the birthday party, which you should, then you can get tickets online now. If you want to watch another build, then we're back at 1.30 with rugby star James Haskell. Please give it up one more time for Pearl Mackey. <laughs> Thank you.